All right, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Tonto's Demise Week 10 Recap. Losing track of what week it is anymore. We are getting down to the nitty gritty. Three weeks left in the regular season. And we have a huge, I don't want to, I can't say log jam. It's not good enough for Josh. Clusterfuck is the proper, I believe, term that I'm supposed to be using. Um, yeah, we, we now have eight teams at five and five this week. Two teams at the bottom, two at the top. Seven three six four four six three seven. The other eight teams, uh, <laughs> the buns are three and seven. They've got sevens and threes, fours and sixes, and everybody else has two fives. So that is what sixty six percent of the league. <laughs> um, yeah, we are all <laughs> have the same record. I'm not sure that it's ever happened this far into the season. Um, I think I said before, no one has really pulled away with it, although we could make an argument that Brian is starting to pull away from everyone else. Um, getting He's scored over 200 three weeks in a row now. If not, uh, it was pretty close the weeks before. He is... More than 200 points ahead of the next highest point scorer. So, uh, yeah, all, all things are uh, have fallen in his favor so far this year. Although he did lose Austin Hooper for a little bit of time. Um, really, I think he's most, probably... It's pretty safe to assume that Brian is already coasting his way to a bye week. So... Uh, I'm sure Hooper will probably be back by the time that you're going to need him. Although, I don't think you have a tight end here for week 11, so you'll have to make a move there. I mean, you kind of coasted through the season so far. A couple of, a couple of you guys have coasted through the season, not really having to make many changes or moves to your lineups. Um, a couple of guys, though, injury bugs starting to hit them. Uh, some guys who have... Not had, to, not had to deal with injuries all season long. Uh, a couple of you got hit a little bit this week, so um, we'll see how that plays out going uh, forward. But again, uh, we had some exciting matchups this week. Three of the matchups came down to Monday night, uh, really, and that game wasn't... <laughs> a couple of the, uh, Really, the matchups weren't decided, I would say, especially... Uh, uh, Darkwing Jut versus Disco. That game, that matchup was not decided until the final play of overtime, which overtime, they played the entire overtime, kicked the field goal at the last second there. Uh, yeah, Brian or Justin and Disco's matchup was undecided. Uh, could have gone either way until that field goal. We will get into that. Uh, a little bit later, great matchup. Uh, so three of the three matchups came down to Monday night, and it made it uh, pretty fun to watch. A lot of people were probably on the edge of their seats, uh, but yeah. So yeah, those are the big takeaways I think from week ten. A lot of close matchups. Uh, said a lot of things come down to Monday night. There made things pretty exciting. We usually don't have three matchups that end up being that close coming down to Monday night, uh, especially all the way to the end of the game on Monday night. And again, um, eight teams all clusterfucked at five and five with three games to go. So uh, these next, especially next week, uh, or these weeks are going to be really important coming up. And I still don't know <laughs> who is going to make the playoffs. And who is not going to make the playoffs? So, good times. Exciting to watch here. Uh, but yeah, why don't I just quit ranting and get right into it. As always, we start with the defending champion, Yinzer Jags. He was going up against Possum Magic. 
He was all upset because Posse Magic pretty much revamped his team going into this matchup last week. Uh, getting a new quarterback, new uh, pretty much an entire new running back core, uh, a couple receivers, making some trades there. Uh, but yeah, this one actually, uh, <laughs> I know Matt was upset that uh, Drew Brees was going over to Possum Magic, but in my defense, I actually saved you a couple points <laughs> because Josh Allen actually ended up outscoring Drew Brees this week. Uh, but it was actually Christian Kirk who was the big factor in this matchup here, among some other injury things going on for Yins or Jags. But anyway, uh, perhaps getting some revenge, I believe, for Possum Magic a couple weeks ago. I am pretty sure that the podcasters basically skipped over uh, Possum Magic's lineup and said he is this team is awful. It's not even worth talking about it. They're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what happened, if I remember correctly. But um, yeah, and then he went <laughs> he went on to win that week. I think that was the week he upset uh, Dub C Hooligans. Uh, he comes back to sting Yinzer Jags this week. Possum Magic one eighty nine point seven five to Yinzer Jags one thirty one point eight. Let's take a look at the winner, Possum Magic. He got 46 and a half from Drew Brees, said Christian Kirk. He had a long touchdown. He went for just over 40 points this week. Uh, your other wide receivers, Cole Beasley, 11 and a half. Marvin Jones, 11, 12 and a half. Your new running back core, Damian Williams and Joe Mixon, acquired from Disco. Uh, you got 14 from Williams and 20 from Mixon. Hunter Henry, your tight end. 13 points even. You went with Erickson, a wide receiver from Cincinnati, who actually had no catches. I see he had him in a flex there. All his stats came from uh, 13 rushing yards, 1.3, even though he is a wide receiver. Uh, he had a problem, had a lot of bye week issues this week. Uh, Jordan Howard, your, red, your three Redskins. Scary Terry, AP, and Chris Thompson. So you had to put Erickson in there in the flex. Fortunately for you, it didn't cost you. Uh, kicker, you had to make a trade. One, one of the reasons you had to make a trade was you had no kicker and you had no transactions. Uh, seems like that's the case every year around this time. But Possum Magic acquired Carlson, the Oakland Raiders kicker. He got you about six or seven points there. And then the Colts defense. Uh, surprisingly, lost to Miami. Uh, let's see. Yahoo says 15, but your total jumped up about 12. That long touchdown, we counted that in there. So it was probably the actual score for the Colts, even though they lost, uh, must have been about 23 or 24. But yeah, big score from Kirk. Uh so 20 from Mixon, 14. So a lot of scores in the teens and low 20s there. But uh, Breeze and Kirk there, getting you about 85 points between those two, almost 90. Uh, enough to get past Yinzer Jags this week. Let's take a look down his lineup. He had Jameis Winston uh, go for 53 points. His three receivers, Robbie Anderson, Emmanuel Sanders, and Robert Woods. Sanders checked out of this one early on Monday night with a rib injury. Not sure how serious that is. Uh, let's see. I see they're expecting him to be a game time decision this coming week. So we'll see. I believe you have uh, Hopkins coming back from a, his bye week. So you'll be able to plug him in, I would imagine. Um, you want to get you probably probably want to get Robbie Anderson out of there, but you might have to keep him in one more week, as perhaps Emmanuel Sanders might miss a game here. We'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, Anderson, Sanders, Woods, two, four and a half, and sixteen and a half respectively. Uh, your run, your running backs. Let's see, Ty Johnson, running back from the Detroit Lions. Now that Carry On Johnson is out. He only got you three points. I believe he got concussed in this game. Is still in the concussion protocol. We'll have to wait and see. 
if you have him available for next week. Uh, Devontae Freeman, he got you almost eight points before checking out with a foot injury. He is already listed as doubtful for this week coming up. So we'll see what you do there. you got James White on your bench. He had a bye. Uh, I'm sure you'll be plugging him in for one of those guys. Uh, so we'll see what you do on the waiver wire here coming up later this evening. Tight end, you put in Kelsey because uh, you had, I think you flip-flopped. Usually you had Kittle in the, in the tight end spot and Kelsey in the flex. But uh, made a smart move there before the games to plug Kelsey in just in case you had to um, remove Kittle, which you ended up, you did end up having to do. Kelsey did go for 20 and a half points there, uh, but he had to bench Kittle because he was out this week. And you had Gus Edwards from Baltimore. He only got you 1.7. Your kicker, Tucker from Baltimore, all extra points. Made seven of them though, so pretty good there. Not too bad. And you went with the Cleveland Browns defense against Buffalo. Yahoo says 7. I'm going to guess the actual score must have been about 15 or 16 there. But yeah, lots of single-digit scores here for the most part. Besides, um, so you got 53 from Winston, 20 from Kelsey. Pretty good. Woods finally had a good game. 16.5 from him. Uh, his second highest point total of the year. Uh, but yeah, injuries and some single-digit scores there. Not enough to get you in the win column this week. As Yenzer Jags with that loss, he drops to one of the, he's one of the five and fives. He is in eighth place. While Possum Magic, he moves up to three and seven. Still not exactly out of the playoffs, but definitely um, on life support, I would say. Best record he can get at this point is 6-7, and seven, although I think we could safely make an argument that his low point total, which is lower than, it's, it's significantly lower than most everyone else above him, uh, is um, pretty much going to guarantee that he is out of the playoffs this year. Uh, but he's still, so he's, he's still in 12th place. He is 3-7. and seven. Um, it's technically not out, but things are pretty dire from a numbers perspective on your team there. Anyway, next matchup. Uh, what's, let's, let's talk about all the ones that didn't go to Monday night first. How about that? Uh, was this one of them? No, I don't think so. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Who didn't? Go Monday night. Okay, Midgets, Mighty Midgets versus 10 XL Entries. And uh, Mighty Midgets, who's been on a slide lately, uh, still in third place, though, despite this loss. 10 XL Entries, he was also kind of on a slide lately, too. A lot of injured players, uh, a lot of bye week problems. But he was able to pull off a pretty good um, victory this week. Uh, no, no Deshaun Watson, no problem. Uh, Dak Prescott went for one of his probably higher point scores of the year. Let's see. Yeah, his second highest point total of the season. Dak Prescott plugging him in there this week. Uh, final score here, 10 XL entries, 208.15. Easily getting over the Mighty Midgets, 147.6. All right, so like I said, Dak Prescott had him in the lineup for probably the second or third time this year since Deshaun Watson was on his bye week. And he comes through for you, getting almost 60 points. Golden Tate, uh, he's been, a, he's been a, a real find here ever since he, in the draft there, ever since he's come back from his suspension, he has been pretty much money, <clears throat> excuse me, every week. Uh, only four catches, but two of them went for touchdowns. He has been, let's see, he had 23 and a half points this week. He has been over 50, at least, he's been over 12 to, well, let me just run down real, I guess, run the numbers real quick here. Since he's come back from his suspension, uh, he started out with a four-point game, but then he's gone 22, 14, 16, 11, and 23. 
So he has been a pretty consistent performer there for you since he came back from that suspension. Devontae Parker, 12 points. Michael Thomas, 31.2. Uh, no touchdowns, but he caught 13 passes for 152 yards. Just getting you over the 150 there and getting that three-point bonus. Your running back site. It's never good when you're starting two Miami Dolphins. <laughs> you started Kalen Balage. He got you eight and a half. And then you started Trey Edmonds, the Steelers running back, backup running back, because James Conner was out with an injury this week. He got you three and a half points. Jimmy Graham, about eight points. And then another big factor in this matchup, I think you didn't pick him up till pretty close to game time. Uh, Darius... Slayton, is that his first name? Darius Slayton, uh, wide receiver from the Giants. He's been up and down in terms of being on and off people's rosters these past few weeks. Um, Sterling Shepard still out. Uh, he was out there on the free agent uh, market there, waiver wire, and Jay picked him up, plugged him in. He went for 10 catches, 120 yards. And two touchdowns, 34.1 points. Mason Crosby, your kicker, he goes for about seven, seven and a half. And then the Chicago Bears defense, Yahoo says 11. Your score is 10 points higher, so their actual score must have been about 20 or so. But yeah, a little bit over 200 points there for 10 XL entries, <laughs> despite having no James Conner, no Sony Michelle, no Adam Thielen. No Deshaun Watson, no Will Fuller. Uh, so yeah, pretty much kind of playing with backups this week. 10 XL entries, able to get the victory over Mighty Midgets. Putting both of you at 5-5. Five and five. For the Mighty Midgets, he had Matt Ryan come back. Um, but only 35.5 points from him. I believe he seems to be okay with his ankle injury coming back. But um, yeah. This is the first time that, I, as far as I can tell, when Matt Ryan has been completely healthy, that he has scored less than 50 points, uh, according to his game log there. But it was tough defense. Kind of surprised that they did so well. They were running the ball pretty well. Uh, Matt Ryan didn't have to do too much in this game. So usually he racks up those fantasy points because they are trailing by so much that Matt Ryan has to throw the ball 50 times a game. But not this week, and it cost the mighty midgets here. Uh, his wide receivers, Marquise Brown, Calvin Ridley, Josh Reynolds, in place of the injured Brandon Cooks, who knows how long he is going to be out with his concussion problems. Uh, Brown, 18 points, Ridley, 7.5, and, and Reynolds, just under 8. Running backs, Carson and Kamara, 19 and 15.5, and respectively. Tight end, Jonu Smith from Tennessee Titans, seven points there. Uh, in the flex, Austin Eckler, he did have a touchdown, a couple catches there, 12.8. Your kicker, Butker from the Titans, or not the Titans, the Texans, not the, <laughs> the Titans, the Texans, wrong, wrong, third time's a charm. The Chiefs, he's the Chiefs kicker. I'm looking here at the Tennessee uh at Tennessee in his um, Ross in his lineup here thing. Uh, so yeah, Butker, Yahoo says 14. I think he got you about 15 or so, maybe a little bit more than that. Looks like he kicked several field goals. And then the Chargers defense, they lost the game, but did okay, not too bad. Yahoo says nine. Um, uh, actually, that must have been correct because your score is only about a point and a half higher than what you got. So that nine actually must have been correct there. Uh, yeah. So for Mighty Midgets, we had said only 35 from your quarterback, nine from your defense. That's 40, that's about 45 points. Uh, from those two combined, it's still less than Dak got for 10 XL entries. That's going to put you in a tough spot every week. And Michael Thomas and Darius Slayton going for 65 points between those two. Pretty much covering a lot of your other players combined there. Uh, Kamara and Carson. Kamara kind of a disappointing uh, yardage total there. No touchdowns, even though he caught eight passes. 
Uh, yeah, not too much you can do. Said when you're always say whenever your opponent goes over 200, your team has got to definitely show up and put up a good score there. Unfortunately for Mighty Midgets, he was not able to do it this week. And like I just mentioned, both teams, 10 XL entries moves up to 5-5, five five, while the Mighty Midgets drop to 5-5. Five five. Although the Mighty Midgets uh, can't be too mad at this point because they are still in third place, while the uh, 10 XL entries, he moves up to sixth place. All right, who else did not matter on Monday night? I think Gags versus Hillbillies on PCP. This one was decided already. And I would think earlier in the season, we were saying that Gags was steamrolling over all of his opponents. Well, the tables have been turned uh, completely around as the Hillbillies on PCP have been steamrolling their opponents for the past few weeks here. And this week, his victim is from Gags to Riches, whose slide continues. Uh, Hillbillies goes for another 236.1 points this week, while Gags to Riches, still a respectable score, but not enough when you're going up against the Hillbillies this year. 162.95. For Hillbillies on PCP, no, no Matt Stafford, no problem. He had Kirk Cousins go for 44.5. Kenny Galladay, 14.7. Uh, Juju, 7.5. And, and Metcalf, an even 11 points there. Your two <laughs> running backs, Cook and McCaffrey, as we know. I uh, always say you could pretty much pencil them in for 50 points each week. And they actually combined for 60, a little over 60 this week. So even more, uh, 31.3 for Cook, 29.1 for McCaffrey. So 60.4 between those two guys. Uh, Austin Hooper did catch a touchdown before getting hurt. 11.5 points there. Derrick Henry showed up for you once again this week to give you over 100 points. I I'm pretty sure. Almost 100 points because he had a bonus. He had a long touchdown there. So, yeah, between Cook, McCaffrey, and Derrick Henry this week, Hillbillies on PCP gets uh, almost 100 points just from those three. Uh, and then 45 from Cousins. There's 145. Um, Steelers defense did had another big game. Not sure what their total was. Probably close to 40. So that's 185 right there. Already basically beating Gags without any wide any of his wide receivers there. Uh, so it's going to be a tough matchup for pretty much everyone going forward in the season. Uh, <laughs> if Brian's team keeps putting up numbers like this, um, it's going to take a humongous effort from somebody to knock him off uh, at some point. Um, going forward in the playoffs. We'll see if it can be done or if it will be done. Who knows? Maybe this will finally be Brian's year. Uh, the podcasters, perhaps, going back, uh, exchanging, <laughs> going back to back in championship years here. And the, tr the trophy won't have to, perhaps, perhaps the trophy won't have to travel too far. Uh, but let's not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, but it's going to be fun to watch, that is for sure. So, uh, yeah. Um, where do we stop on Brian's team here? Kicker, Bailey. Uh, he went for more uh, Minnesota Vikings here for your team. Uh, he got you about six or seven. And then again, the Steelers defense. Uh, we bumped you up about 14, so it must have been 11. So you got about 40, 42 maybe. From the Steelers defense this week. Uh, yeah, so well over 200, 236. Uh, Gags to Riches just could not keep up this week. Let's take a look at his lineup. He had uh, Thursday night, Phillip Rivers to Keenan Allen connection has been uh, more dud than anything else most weeks this, uh, since, ever, since you acquired him. Phillip Rivers only goes for 26.5 points. Keenan Allen goes for 16 and a half. Devontae Adams, 18.8. And Julio Jones, 11. 
Your running backs, Breida and Gurley. Four and a half for Breida, seven and a half for Gurley. Greg Olson, 17.8. In the flex, Jarvis Landry, 24.7. Good game for him. Nine for 97 and a touchdown. Your kicker is Zerline. Looks like about three, three and a half. And then you went with the Jets defense against the Giants there. Uh, they won the game. They did give up a lot of yards and stuff. But they did score a touchdown. A couple of turnovers there. A bunch of sacks. Yahoo says 21. The actual score must have been about 30, 32, 33. Maybe something like that. I'm going to say 33. Uh, but yeah. Your quarterback only getting you 26. That hurts. Uh... Not bad scores uh, from up and down your lineup. <laughs> Don't want to say that Todd Gurley has been a um, weakness on your team <laughs> because I traded him to you, and Melvin Gordon is starting to pick it up here. So not gonna. Don't want to um, seem like I'm gloating or <laughs> bragging or anything about that trade. But uh, seems I would have to say that it's starting to come through for me. A little bit more than it is for Gags here, but we'll see how it goes going forward. I don't know if Gags had some bye week issues or what here. Uh, yeah, not really, just some underperforming players. Said 162, uh, still not a bad score. You would have beaten several other teams if you had played them this week. So um, that's kind of just the way it goes from time to time. Hillbillies on PCP stays in first place. He is 7-3. Gets to that magic number seven, most likely will be a has one of the playoff spots locked up. But at this point, I would still say that that is the only playoff spot that is locked up. Hibbillies on PCP, five other spots being chased by pretty much all the rest of us. Uh, Gags to riches, he drops to five and five. He is in fifth place. All right, then these last three matchups came down to Monday night. Let's do Dub C Hooligans versus Ed Lager. Dub C Hooligans, he was done going into Monday night. His score was 126.75, while Ed Lager, he had, let's see, 116.75. Yeah, so he was exactly 10 points behind Dub C Hooligans. He had Tyler Lockett left to play, and Tyler Lockett said it needed exactly 10 points. He has been above 10 every single week this year, except for one previously. <laughs> and unfortunately for Ed Lager, it's now two weeks this year, as Tyler Lockett said needed 10 points, only got you six. And the Dub C Hooligans hold on to get a win this week. Final score, one said 126.75 to 122.65. For the Dubsy Hooligans, no Patriots this week, no problem. <laughs> Although I'm sure you weren't feeling that way uh, all, pretty much the entire time until uh, over, probably until overtime of this the uh, Seahawks game there. Uh, Said no Tom Brady. You went with Tannehill this week. Even though they scored 35 points, he only had 13 completions, two touchdowns, 180 yards. Just under 34 points from Tannehill. Your receivers, Larry Fitzgerald, Curtis Samuel, and what's his first name? Russell Gage from the Atlanta Falcons. Fitzgerald, 15. Samuel, 13.5. Gage, 6.5. Your running backs, Ingram 2, Jones 2, 9.5, and, and 22.6 for Jones. Uh, both guys, looks like they had a touchdown. Ingram didn't do too much besides his touchdown, but Jones had almost 16 points uh, in receptions there, it looks like. Uh, he must not have done much rushing. Uh, let's see. He only had 29 rushing yards, but he did score a touchdown. But again, he got you almost 16 points there from receiving stats. Uh, your tight end, Hawkinson, 7.7. .7. David Johnson in the flex. He played this week. He was in there. 
but he still scored zero, which he has done the past three weeks, four weeks. Uh, if you consider point two a, a uh, respectable score there, that's basically zero. But the guy's playing, I don't know, uh, let's see, whatever his, his point, his stats figured out to only two because then he lost a fumble, which brought it right back to zero, and that is where he ended up with uh, zero this week. But again, <laughs> it didn't cost you this week, so uh, you still got the win. This low point total uh, isn't going to do you any favors, though, in the race to the playoffs, but at this point, just, <laughs> just take the win and be happy. Uh, Lutz, your kicker, looks like about eight and a half points from him. And then again, no Patriots defense, no problem this week. You went with the Giants defense. They lost the game. They only had two sacks. They gave up a ton of points. Yahoo says two, but they must have gotten you a little bit more, probably about, um, I'm going to guess, eight or ten, something like that. But yeah, like I said, <laughs> it was just enough. To get past Ed Logger this week, going into that Monday night matchup. Uh, for Ed Logger, he had Lamar Jackson go for 50 and a half points. Your three receivers, Diggs, Lockett, and Pascal, uh, all single digit scores here, eight, six, and four and a half, respectively. Saquon Barkley, um, man, only one rushing yard. But he managed five catches for 30 yards to get you 8.1 points before perhaps re-aggravating his ankle injury. Not sure um, exactly what was going on there, but he didn't do too well. I don't know if he missed time in that game. But um, yeah, the 8.1 disappointing performance from him. Uh, perhaps missing some time in that game cost him. Um, speaking of missing some time in that game, I should say that Tyler Lockett... Um, did get injured at some point, either in the late fourth quarter. Must, it had to have been the fourth quarter at some point because starting overtime, uh, so Ed Logger only needed four points here from Lockett. Uh, he, so I guess, he, though, he injured. Uh, Lockett, I'm pretty sure he made a catch there near the end of the game. Perhaps when he was getting tackled, something happened there, but he had a pretty significant bruise, they said, on his ankle, lower leg there. And I think he said, as I, as I speak, I'm pretty sure he is still in the hospital uh, recovering, having that injury monitored there. So he sat on the bench during overtime. And once that was, uh, uh, yeah, once he was on the bench there, confirmed he probably wasn't coming back in. That pretty much sealed the deal for the Dub C Hooligans. Um, but again, getting back to Ed Logger and Saquon Barkley. Uh, he's got a bye week coming up here, so you won't have him in a week that you might, you probably need him, but at least he'll have some extra time here to get healthy and get you through those last two games of the regular season. Your other running back, Jamal Williams, no catches, no touchdowns for him this week, kind of a surprise there. Uh, 6.3. Tight end, Jared Cook, 13.5. Mike Williams in the flex, only two catches, 7.5 points from him. Boswell, your kicker, about six points, five and a half or so. And then the Buffalo Bills defense. Uh, looks like they had a safety, had a couple of sacks. They did lose the game to Cleveland. Yahoo says 13. And I believe that must have been the correct score because we only bumped you up 0.3 from what uh, Yahoo has you uh, uh, going as there. So yeah, 13 must have been the actual point total for Buffalo there. Um, kind of a surprising outcome there. Thought they would do a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, all sorts of things can go, could have gone differently in these matchups that come down to just a few points, if not less than that. But yeah, Dub C Hooligans <laughs> somehow uh, gets the win this week. Surprisingly, he moves up to 5-5, five and five, although he is still in 10th place. Ed Logger, he falls to 6-4. and four. Couldn't get that number 7 this week, but he is still st sitting in a pretty good position here at 2nd uh, place. 6-4 and four there. Alright, then we had the Springfield Isotopes going up against the Shawshank Athletics. It was actually the 
is it was it Twerk Kabisic versus the Carry On My Hayward Son? Uh, I see that the team names were already changed here, so uh, we had different names here going up against each other this week. Had to counter Josh. He was uh, mixing it up a little bit, changed changed his name a couple times uh, to changing his team name up a couple of times to names that involved my name, or at least my last name there. So I had to come back at him with uh, something with his last name, and we went with Carry On My Hayward Son. Yeah, it was Twerk Kabisic there. Um, but anyway, uh, this one, going into Monday night, the Springfield Isotopes held a lead of, I believe it was 53.4. So Shawshank needed 53.5 to get a win here from Russell Wilson. Uh, the rest of his team there, he needed 53.5 from Russell Wilson. Uh, wasn't quite able to get there. Only 42 points from him. So the Springfield Isotopes were able to hold on this week and get the victory over Twerk Kabisic. Uh, Shawshank Athletics. Uh, carry on my Hayward son, a.k.a. Springfield Isotopes. Goes for 226.7, while Shawshank Athletics goes for 215.2. Uh, for, uh, for the Isotopes, the second matchup, <clears throat> excuse me, there have only been two matchups this year where we had a 200 point score versus a 200 point score. The Isotopes have been involved in both of them, and both times they have come out on top. Uh, coincidence that both teams that who lost with 200 points were the Cobras. Uh, just coincidence, I don't know. But anyway, a tough loss, a tough pill to swallow for the Shawshank Athletics this week. Said scoring 215, but still getting the loss. For the Isotopes, we had Patrick Mahomes go for 75.3. Tyreek Hill, 36. Uh, Tyrell Williams, 5.5. Michael Gallup, 17.5. Running backs Aaron Jones and Melvin Gordon, 27.3 and 23.3, respectively. Tight end Jack Doyle, 13.5. In the flex, Marlon Mack, only 9.2. Uh, kicker Gonzalez from the Arizona Cardinals, uh, looks like he had about 12 or so, something like that, maybe 12.5. And, and then the New Orleans Saints defense, a surprising uh, outcome, I thought, <laughs> in this game. Especially at home, coming off a bye week against the Falcons, thought they would do pretty well. They got blown out. Um, the, the, I believe Yahoo's score was actually correct. Uh, seven points there because um, the point total is only an extra 1.1 from what Yahoo has there. So, uh, But yeah, it was enough to get past uh, Shawshank Athletics despite... Putting up a good effort here, nothing to hang your head about. Uh, said Rus again, Russell Wilson going into Monday night. You needed 53 and a half from him. He was only able to deliver 41.9. Your wide receivers, you had Jamison Crowder, Allen Robinson, and Amari Cooper. Crowder goes for 19. Uh, Robinson goes for 14 and a half, and Cooper went for 31.7. 147 yards, 11 catches, a touchdown. Just missed getting you that 150. Would have been an extra three points there, uh, but wouldn't have changed the outcome here. Then you had Chubb and Zeke. Chubb goes for 17, and Zeke, surprisingly, only goes for 8.3. Uh, yeah, Zeke had been in double digits every week this, week, this year. Uh, was probably expecting about 20 points or so from him. Uh, he definitely, his lowest score, his lowest previous score was 13 in week one. But other than that, he had been at 16, ranging from 16 to 30 in that area every other week. Uh, kind of just getting lucky, I guess, <laughs> this week for me, as Zeke goes for under 10 points first time this year at 8.3. Your tight end, Andrews, went for two early touchdowns in this game uh, against Cincinnati uh, as they, the Ravens blew out the Bengals. <laughs> he went for 23.3. 23. 
One of the biggest concerns, I think, of mine going into this week against Josh was this Baltimore versus uh, Cincinnati game. Ball, uh, Cincinnati starting the rookie quarterback here, and he certainly <laughs> uh, helped the Baltimore defense here for J or Josh. Uh, let's do your other, other uh, players here. You got Boyd in the flex, 12.2, and then Sly, your kicker, he went for 6. And then the Baltimore Ravens defense said they scored two touchdowns. They had a long touchdown return on an interception. Uh, said two fumble recoveries there. Yahoo says 29, but we bumped you up about 12. Don't think, um, well, yeah, you had a long touchdown there. So the actual score for the Ravens defense must have been about 40 or so. Maybe just over 42, something like that. But yeah, um, really, what can you say about Shawshank this week other than Zeke kind of let you down? And uh, said so he went over, it was 11, an 11 point difference here. Um, and both over 200. Really, what can you say about either team? They both showed up this week. Uh, but unfortunately for Shawshank, um, he is on the wrong side of a 200 point score there. Both teams are now 5-5, five and five, although Shawshank, I guess, gets the last laugh for the time being. He is in 4th place, while the Springfield Isotopes are in 7th place. Alright, and then we had the matchup of the week, and this one did not disappoint. Whew. First of all, I'm already winded because I don't do this much talking uh, pretty much the entire rest of the week, as I do in this hour uh, for the, during the recap. But this, I believe this was the matchup of the week on the podcast last week, and it more than lived up to the billing. Going into this matchup, both of you were 4-5. and five. Whoever lost this matchup would get loss number 6 and be in pretty dire straits in terms of making the playoffs here. Uh... So yeah, it pretty much a, whoever lost here was going to be in a tough spot. And um, even though you guys have been on both these two teams who were near the bottom doing real bad a couple weeks ago, but put together, uh, both teams had put together win streaks, said to get themselves all the way back up to four, both at four and five there. Uh, but unfortunately, you guys collided this week and only one of you could get a win. And... It, this week, it was Darkwing Jet squeaking out a victory over Disco, 142.45 to 138.95. Now, these scores might not sound impressive, but as I said, it came down to that last to the last play of the last second of overtime on this Monday night game. Uh, so... Justin had, let's take a look here, going into Monday night, Justin, Darkwing Jut, he had 131.25, while Disco had 112.95, so that was about an 18 and a half point difference, so uh, yeah, Darkwing had an 18 and a half point advantage. He still had Tevin Coleman left to play, while Disco had the San Francisco uh, 49ers defense, who has been putting up, putting up pretty solid numbers all year long. I think Justin and I were talking about it a little bit before the game. Kind of if they, if the 49ers defense did what they usually do, he should expect um, about a 30-point performance or so. And that's pretty much what they ended up giving you. So the 18 and a half points, you were going to need Tevin Coleman to um, not have a great game, but definitely show up and get you a dozen or so points there. Fortunately for Darkwing Jut, that is what ended up happening. And we'll get into the specifics here after I just run through the lineups real quick. For Darkwing Jut, he had Jared Goff only go for 26.15. His three receivers, Mike Evans, Odell Beckham Jr., and DJ Moore. 
Uh, not often that DJ Moore is the highest point scorer out of these three guys, but that's what happened this week. Evans 12.2, Beckham 10.7, and Moore an even 21. Uh, we will let's, let's skip over Tevin Coleman for right now. Kenyon Drake 10.1, uh, Gazicki from the for, uh, the Dolphins at tight end this week because no Evan Ingram he's out with an injury. Only 3.8 points there, but you needed all 3.8. <laughs> um, in the flex, Singletary from the Bills, uh, 8 points. Your kicker, Mayer from Dallas, uh, about 4.5 points. And then the Los Angeles Rams defense, even in defeat, they did pretty well. Had a couple turnovers, scored a touchdown, had a safety, I'm pretty sure, there. Uh, Yahoo says 26 your actual score must have been about 33 or 34, something, maybe maybe 35. As for Disco, Aaron Rodgers, uh, <laughs> both quarterbacks only going for 20-something here. Rodgers gets 29.35. Perhaps the biggest factor here, a huge surprise here, as Cooper Cup comes back from the bye week in which he went off for 30 uh, I think he had a long touchdown. So he was over 40 points two weeks ago. He comes back from his bye in, against the Steelers, and he goes for zero points. Ouch. <laughs> what can you do? What can you say? I I, I don't know. That hurts uh, if you're a disco. Godwin and John Brown, your other two receivers, 13.5, 12.5, Montgomery and Jacobs, your running backs, 6 and 19. Waller the baller, your tight end, 7 points. Le'Veon goes for 16.8 in your flex. Prater, your kicker, goes for about 8.5. And, and then the 49ers defense there on Monday night. So, what ended up happening here? Said so on Monday night, Darkwing had that 18.5 point advantage with Tevin Coleman left to go versus Disco and the San Francisco 49ers defense. All right. I didn't turn on the game. I avoided it until the beginning of the fourth quarter, I'm pretty sure. Because when I turned on the game, it was 20, it was 21 to 10 Seahawks. Um said I had seen, I wasn't getting any real. <laughs> Uh, updates on my phone, so the game, it, it, which was good news for me because that must have been that must have meant that not much was happening uh, in the game, which ended up being okay, which or ended up being what was actually happening here. Uh, so I finally checked the scores and what was going on. It was said it was the beginning, early beginnings of the fourth quarter there. Um, so I knew Russell Wilson needed. 53, 53 and a half points there. He only had, I think, 27 with one quarter to go. So it's feeling pretty good that I pretty much had that locked up. But uh, yeah, they were saying the 40, or Sam, bleh, Seattle said had that big lead, 21 to 10. They were cruising in control of the game. And no sooner do I turn on the game that like two plays into, <laughs> into viewing it, the 49ers sacked Wilson. He dropped the ball into his... It popped up into the air, right into the hands of his one of his linemen, who instead of just dropping to the ground, which you should have done, because let's face it, buddy, you're not going anywhere. Just get on the ground. Someone comes in, punches the ball out from him. Uh, San Francisco picks it up, runs it in for a touchdown. Suddenly, it's 21 to 17, and actually, I think they went for two and got the two points to make it 21 to 18 within a field goal there. Uh, I believe that is what happened. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden it is a game. And I felt bad for Justin knowing that uh, said San Fran just got a, a fumble, probably a sack, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown there. All for Disco. Um, putting them in a tough And suddenly it was a game. And that whole fourth quarter and that overtime was, it was just back and forth from that point on, even though um, said the. It was from that point. It was twenty-one to eighteen. Uh, then San Fran got a field goal to tie the game up at twenty-one, uh, and then Seattle went down. 
with about a minute left in the game or so, maybe a little bit less, they kick the field goal to take the take the lead 24 to 21. And uh, San Francisco, actually, on the back of Tevin Coleman there, their last drive, threw a couple passes to him, got some yards there, uh, a couple points for catches, and put up some good yards there. Got them in the field goal position, and the 49ers kicked the field goal to tie the game at 24 and going to heading into overtime. So this game could have gone either way. If Seattle had held on to win, I even I still not I'm still not sure that Disco would have lost this matchup because it took the overtime uh, stats there to knock the uh, let's see I think um, they gained rushing yards they they gained passing yards they gained first downs like <laughs> the in, getting into overtime and the Seattle uh, Seattle running plays and moving down moving down the field uh, getting first downs and stuff those uh, those that yardage those first downs are knocking points off of Disco's score there um, but yeah it looked like San Fran or uh, <laughs> Seattle was going down and they looked like they were gonna punch it in a score they were, it looked like they were going for the touchdown no field goal like we're gonna win this game uh, right here and now. But uh, Russell, then Russell Wilson throws an interception. That's three points for Disco there, and the and the kick and the, inter the interception gets run back to past the fifty. Like they're almost in field goal range, um, just from the interception return. And then they don't get too far. Attempt a long field goal from the kicker, not Robbie Gold, some guy who they pretty much just signed to play and kick this week for them. And unfortunately, I think it was like a 47-yard field goal. Unfortunately, he missed that field goal, and they they weren't, weren't able to win the game there because that would have... Uh, someone had already possessed the ball. They were the second ones to get it, which means all you need is a field goal uh, from them. Unfortunately, for San Francisco, they missed it. There was only like a minute left Maybe, maybe it's a little bit more than a minute left for the Seahawks to try to go down and get into field goal range. And they were able to, mostly thanks to a Russell Wilson scramble, 20-some yard scramble, got them into field goal range. And at the last seconds of overtime there, kicked the field goal to win the game. So what does that mean? Obviously, the score was 24 to 24. If uh, Seattle hadn't been able to get into field goal range and this game had ended in a tie, that would have won the game for Disco. But since Seattle kicked that field goal, that bumps them up to 27 points. 27 is too many. Uh, that's minus 3 from the San Francisco uh, 49ers score there. And, of course, you lost the game. So that's another 3 points chopped off their total. There's... Just on that last second field goal, there's six points chopped off of Disco's score there. And what ended up being the correct total is 20, uh, what Yahoo says, 26. Because uh, yeah, the range of what Yahoo uh, scores points for the scoring uh, there is a little bit off than what our range is. Like the 2 to 9, 10 to 6, 10 to 8, 10 to 17. Um, 18 to 25, you know what I mean, know what I mean there? Um, but yeah, Yahoo's default scoring is a little little bit different than ours. But yeah, <laughs> this was back and forth. Said Col Tevin Coleman getting those couple of catches and yards at the end of that, on that last, uh, the one field goal drive at the end of regulation. <laughs> getting them in there. Justin needed, <laughs> needed all of that uh, and just said, this game, the game was back and forth. This matchup between Justin and Disco could have gone either way. Said so missed field goals, made field goals, getting into overtime, the back and forth. Oh, and said not coming. It wasn't decided until um, Myers from Seattle kicks that field goal and at the last second of overtime. Said knocking those six points off of Disco's score, 
and securing the victory for Darkwing Jutt. In the matchup, again, both of these guys really needed. Uh, the loser gets put in a pretty difficult spot and prob probably is going to have to win out the rest of their schedule. <clears throat> Excuse me, no easy task there to win three in a row in our league. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Sorry about that. Uh, Darkwing Jutt, so with this win, he moves up to 5-5. Five and five. He is in ninth place. Well, unfortunately for Disco, he is the one who drops to 4-6. and six. He is in 11th place. And if that was not enough for Disco, a little salt in the wound this week as your 138.95 gets you eliminated from the knockout pool as the Mighty Midgets had 147 and they hold on. They will go up against Hillbillies on PCP here in week 11. Hillbillies versus Mighty Midgets for the knockout pool money here in 2019. So, whew, I am winded. Again, talking about that matchup, it was a, I was sitting here looking at the scores, figuring out exactly what happened, make sure everything was correct here. Uh, it was uh, just knowing, and said texting back and forth with Justin at the end of that game. He said he was chain smoking, uh, needed to take a break. Uh, it was ex it just I was exhilarated just from the from knowing how excited that they were in victory and frustrated in defeat. It was and knowing said um, Kevin holding on to get that win, narrow a narrow victory there from him. Uh, the Isotopes holding on to get their win. It was just an exciting game uh, and an inf important game for our, not just uh, for the team is playing in it, but uh, yeah, it um, definitely had ramifications for our league here going forward there. So just a great game to watch and see the results that happen. Unfortunately, said one team has to lose, one has to win. That is the way it goes. So unfortunately for Disco, that is um, just what happens. But said so you're not you're down, but you're not out. So we will see with three weeks left to go how uh, if you can turn it turn it around. I, uh, and we'll see. Whew. All right, let's take a quick peek here at week eleven. Said so again, we have all these five and five teams, eight of them, but we only have we only have two matchups of five and five teams. Uh, all, whoever can get to six this week is going to be in a pretty good spot there um, going forward with only two games left. We'll see. Uh, the, the race is so close this year. It's uh, whether you get in or you get out, get, uh, don't make it. Um, you got to admit that it is going to be, it is currently, has been, and will be fun to watch. Uh, let's see, five and fives going against each other are the Isotopes and the Mighty Midgets, and then Dub C Hooligans and Shawshank Athletics. Uh, so Disco, he's probably, he probably has to win out his schedule. Uh, he's gone up against one of the five and fives, 10 XL entries this week. Should be an interesting matchup there. Darkwing Jut going against Possum Magic. Can't count Possum Magic out any this this year yet either. Uh, perhaps he is playing spoiler at this point, but uh, <laughs> still he's got a team that can knock you up, come out come out <laughs> show up, can come out to play and knock you off at any given time uh, here. So we'll see if he can ruin a couple other people's tea, uh, <laughs> other other teams' um, seasons here going down the stretch. Uh, Good matchup here. Ed Logger and Gags to Riches, two buddies going up against each other. Uh, Ed Logger trying to get uh, his win number seven and not get knocked back to six and five, while Gags is trying to get up to six and five. So that should be a good one to watch. And then we've got the podcasters going up against each other. Yinzer Jags, he is five and five. He needs a win this week. Uh, and unfortunately, he comes up against. Hillbillies on PCP this week. So you're going to need a colossal performance 
from your team or else you're going to need the hillbillies on PCP to have a clunker, which they haven't done much of so far this season here. So yeah, a lot of good matchups um, here in week 11. We'll see how it shakes up the standings, who drops and who rises, and who comes even closer to uh, nailing down one of those last five playoff spots. Again, basically counting Hillbillies on PCP as already taking one of them. Ed Logger, not going to count you in yet because your team has definitely been uh, catching a lot of breaks this year. Uh, you're perhaps not as good as your record indicates. You are 6-4, and four, but you actually have the second lowest point total of any team in the league this year. So you've definitely been catching some breaks, I'd have to say. Uh, you got some injury problems. Sa no Saquon, they're on bye this week. We'll see what happens. Uh, Gags, needs, Gags needs a win here. So... Um, yeah, it's going to be a great week to watch. Said podcasters going against each other. Gags versus Ed going against each other. Me versus Jim, brother-in-law going against each other. Um, yeah, good matchups. Playoff implications all around as we get here down to the wire in the playoff race here, though. Yeah, so going to be another great week to watch. I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, going to be exciting. I hopefully for all these matchups here. Yeah, we will see who breaks up, <laughs> who, uh, who, uh, how all these five and fives shake out, um, who moves up to six, and who drops to six. Uh, yeah, but really, even if you even if you go to five and six this week, I still would not consider you out of the hunt yet. So yeah, it, it's really going to come down to probably week thirteen. And we aren't going to know who the playoff teams are until uh, probably the last game of Week 13, which is uh, as anxiety-inspiring, uh, inducing, I should say, anxiety-inducing as it is to think that it's not going to come down to that. Like, no one is in, um, well, most of us, things are so unsettled that... Um, it is anxiety-inducing again, but it is also a whole ton of fun to watch. And whether you end said whether you end up getting in there or you're on the outside, um, it's going to be a fun race, it's win or lose. So um, good luck to everyone. Thank you for watching or listening or whatever it is you do. No, no injuries, no significant injuries this week to anybody's teams. I hope all of you uh, meet or exceed expectations. In your, in your players' performances, and we have another great week of football. And we will be back here again next week to wrap up the events of Week 11. Looking forward to that. And so, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys, and we will see you back here again next week.